Hi, I'm Michael Price. I'm a product manager on the Visual C++ team. You may know that you can debug uh, an application in a code space from, from VS Code uh, just fine, but uh, GUI applications on Linux, uh, which all, code all GitHub code spaces are Linux-based, uh, if you have a GUI application there, it's usually written in um, a framework called X or X11. And in order for those things to show up on a Linux desktop, uh, you have to have what's called an X server, and it has to be connected to some display that is a video device. But in a GitHub code space, um, those are headless VMs running on the cloud. And so there is no video device or display for uh, X applications to to connect to to display all of their GUI. So this talk is going to show you how you can make that work uh, on your Windows system. So this is a very simple diagram that sort of explains the components and parts uh, that will make this work. So you, you can see in this diagram that we have a Windows system and we have a GitHub code space and that we have an instance of VS Code either running in a web browser or on the desktop uh, that will connect to the VS Code uh, that is running inside the code space. Um, and so whenever you run the application you want to debug in VS Code, um, it doesn't know where to send that, that uh, GUI information to. So the other pieces that you need to be running here um, is you need to actually set up an X forwarding SSH connection between the Windows subsystem for Linux that's running on your Windows system and the, uh, the, the, the SSH daemon that's in the GitHub code space. Um, the other little piece of magic that just automatically happens here is that um, WSL has a feature called WSLG, and that just uh, forwards any of the GUI elements that show up in your local WSL instance to your Windows desktop. So whenever you have those pieces in place uh, and you launch your application to debug it, um, all of the X11 commands, all the things that do the rendering on the screen will get forwarded through the SSH connection and then through WSLG um, back to your Windows desktop uh, where you can actually drive your GUI application uh, for your debugging purposes. You can roughly break down the steps that you're going to need to do into you know, four, four parts. So first you're going to create a code space. I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, then you're going to need to set up local SSH key authentication uh, that you would set up and it'll work through the GitHub CLI, the GH uh, application. Um, and then you need to actually adjust your code space some so that the X11 forwarding works. And then uh, you can uh, go off and do your debugging work and I'll demonstrate that as well. So to show an example of what, uh, what we need to do here, I'm gonna use this repository go-cpp. This is an implementation of the Go board game that I uh, use often. And I have only ever had a console UI for this, but I'm in the process of adding a, a GUI front end for this thing. So I have this branch, multiple front ends. That's already got some basic code there. I'm gonna make a code space by going to the code dropdown and select create code space on multiple front ends. This is going to create a code space in the background. Uh, as you can see here, I have sped this up so we don't have to wait a long time. Uh, this is going to make a code space on the back end and then get a VS Code instance in my browser that is connected to it. And there it goes. It's uh, it's connected up. Uh, you know, I like to pick a color theme for each project that I'm working on. Uh, that way I can distinguish between them and I prefer darker colors. So let's pick, uh, let's pick this one here. Excellent. It'll install that extension. And I have my dark color theme. Uh, I'm going to do some cleanup of some of the windows that are going to pop up and configuration is going to happen. I'm going to speed up through that. And, all right, configuration is done. I've closed all the windows that came up. I uh, needed to make it a little bit bigger. It was a little hard to see, so it's bigger now. We can, we can uh, read it a little bit more easily. I'm going to do a build. Uh, this is going to go and do the build just like it normally would. 
It's not a very big project, so it doesn't take very long. Okay, build's done. Uh, I'm going to go set some breakpoints. Uh, let's set a breakpoint in one of the error conditions, and we'll set a breakpoint uh, on the quit, the close window event, uh, the quit event as well. Let's click debug. Uh, we'll select the GUI, and off, and the debugger is running. So we see that the debugger stopped in our error condition. So let's just go ahead and step through this and uh, figure out what it is that the error, what, what error it's telling us. So it's saying no available video device. This is what we expected, right? Like this is a headless machine. It doesn't have a video device connected to it. Uh, so I did not expect this to work. And that's the error that I was expecting. So what we need to do first um, in the second step uh, in the list that I laid out is set up SSH uh, key authentication. So we're going to run SSH keygen inside our WSL uh, shell. Now, an important part here is you want to give this a very this key pair a very particular name of codespaces.auto. There's a reason why that you'll see later. So I'm going to copy the contents of the public key that was generated. Um, you can see it generated both the public and the private key. We're going to select the contents of the public key. I'm going to have it blurred out here, uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to copy that, and we're going to then use that in the next part of this step. Okay, so what we need to do is you need to go to your github.com uh, profile. It should just be github.com and then your username. You'll click on the little icon in the upper right uh, that's going to pull down a drop-down list, and you're going to find settings and click settings. Okay, go to SSH keys, SSH and GPG keys, and add a new SSH key. Give it a title, whatever you want to name it, and then you'll paste the key that you copied, that public key, into that key field. There we go, and then click Add SSH key. Your SSH key is now added. So let's go back to the console. Uh, and make sure that that actually worked. Okay, back in the console, uh, we're going to use the GH uh, application. This is a command line utility. You can use to interact with GitHub. Uh, there's this code space command. You can see all the interesting stuff you can do with code spaces. We're just going to list the code spaces that are in my account. Uh, you can see my code space that I made is there. Uh, you can view more details about a code space. Um, if you have multiple, it will give you an option to choose. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the gh code space ssh command to actually establish an ssh connection to that code space. Okay, it looks like it connected. So just, you know, as an attempt to see, we're, we're going to try to run the, the, the GUI here and see what it tells us. Okay, it tells us the same thing. That was also expected. Now we're going to fix that in a minute. Uh, but first I wanted to show you an additional little um, uh, tip on how you can make SSHing into your code spaces a little easier. There's a dash dash config option to SSH that will actually print out to standard out the stuff that you would put in your SSH config file uh, so that you can more easily connect to it. When you do this, if you if you redirect it and append it to your .ssh slash config file, this lets you then um, use tab completion and such uh, for your code spaces. You don't have to go through the GitHub uh, user interface. You can just do it directly from your standard SSH client. Okay, now that we've got that set, let's go back to the code space. So what we need to do now is we need to actually go set up the X11 forwarding in your code space. So in order to do that, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your code space has the X auth package installed. So I'm going to let Copilot kind of give me some hints. It did kind of the same thing it was supposed to do above, uh, but that's okay. It got me most of the way, and I'm going to replace that with X auth. I'm not going to accept its suggestion for X11 apps because uh, I don't need them for this. 
Uh, but those are some pretty cool apps. If you just want to test out X forwarding on your own, you can use those. When you do this, uh, you now need to rebuild your container. Um, so if you go up and um, find the re con uh, CodeSpaces rebuild container setting, uh, our option, you can rebuild this container. We'll fast forward through this because it takes a couple of minutes. Okay, the container has been rebuilt. Excellent. But there's still a few more things we need to do. Let's go back to our console, our WSL console. This time we're going to patch the dash XY uh, switch to SSH. This is the thing that actually establishes the X11 term, uh, forwarding. So now we're going to run our GUI. And now when we run the GUI on our local Windows system, we're going to see the GUI app that we tried to run. There, the, the forwarding is now working correctly from this uh, session that I established over SSH. But that doesn't quite get us what we want because it works inside this session and it works because of the um, display environment variable is set to that. So we'll need to know that piece of information to make this also work in VS Code. So if we try the same thing in VS Code, you can see that the display environment variable is not set. We need to have it set to the same thing that our forwarding session has it set to. So if you go into your dev container JSON, you can add a remote env field with display and you set it to the same value that was in your SSH forwarding session. Now, when you rebuild the container this time, it will cancel or it will close out your SSH forwarding connection because the machine goes away. So you will have to reestablish that connection after you do this reset. And the display shouldn't be changing between different sessions. Um, but just to make sure, we're going to go back and establish that forwarding connection again in our SSH client. And we're just going to double check and make sure that the value of the display environment variable didn't change between these sessions. Okay, it's the same in both places. So now we're going to go over to the VS Code instance and we're going to click debug. And you can see this time the application came up and it's running. I can see the GUI in my Windows client, but the application is running on the code space and I'm debugging it through my browser VS Code instance. So you can see, um, we'll go to the terminal. You can see as I move my mouse around and press keystrokes, different events are getting sent to it. And then when I go over and I hit the close window button, I should get that breakpoint over in VS Code. Aha, it's been told to quit. So the breakpoint fired, and now I can just continue through that and the app should close. And we successfully debugged our GUI application running inside a GitHub code space while we're on our Windows system. So just to recap, you know, I showed you how to create a code space. It's pretty easy. Um, setting up SSH key authentication is a little bit more complicated, but not too much. There were a couple of tricks with the GH tool that uh, lets you SSH into your GitHub code space. Um, then we set up the code space to do X11 forwarding. The, the two parts of that were making sure that the X off package is installed and also making sure that you set the display environment variable correctly. Um, and then once you have those things done uh, and you've established SSH forwarding connection from your local machine to the GitHub code space, uh, then you're off to the races and you can debug all your GUI apps and make the most beautiful applications uh, that run in the Linux desktop uh, that anyone would ever want. Uh, thanks for watching the talk and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of Pure Virtual C++ this year. And if you want to get in touch with the Microsoft C++ team, you can reach us at visualcpp at microsoft.com.